So I would like thank you for this interesting presentation, and I think it's very good to start with why question, but then also following with uh, what and how questions, which sometimes we, we miss some of those. We we'll have time to discuss in detail more. I'd like to invite now Simon Battisti. Are you going to present together? And Elvanda Mishketa. Uh, they are both working uh, with the municipality of Tirana. Elion uh, Beliak, no? With Mayor Elion. Uh, Tirana is going through an incredible transformation. If you're not following on Twitter, social media, I highly advise to do so. Uh, you can see how uh, a visionary leader can make a lot of difference even in with, with scarce resources, I should say. But coming back to Simon and Elvanda, Simon uh, was the curator of uh, Albanian Pavio Pavion at the uh, Venice uh, Architecture Biennial. And then he worked at, at the Albanian National Regional Planning Office. And he is graduated from Southern California Institute of Architecture and Harvard Graduate School of Design. Uh, they work together with Elvanda. Elvanda is working on uh, issues of uh, economic governance, uh, entrepreneurship, energy, environment, innovation, and EU expansion. Uh, and she's been consulting uh, to government institutions and recently the municipality of Tirana. Please, uh, are you going to have Okay, yeah, thank you. Please, I'm on the. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, hello. Um, thank you guys so much for having us here. Um, we have been working on um, an Urban 95 project for about three months now, and it's really exciting to have the opportunity to meet uh, a bunch of like-minded individuals um, uh, and talk about what we're doing. So um, we're uh, working with the mayor of Tirana on a project to mainstream uh, infant, toddler, and caregiver issues in urban planning. Uh, and we're just going to run you through today uh, very quickly uh, how we're doing that. And uh, then, yeah, have a conversation. Uh, Jens, I don't see where, oh, do I just use this? OK. OK. So um, uh, so we are a uh, nonprofit called Chender Mardenier. And um, we work with the municipality of Tirana. Uh, we do a collaborative project with the Harvard Graduate School of Design, um, which is the uh, GSD Tirana Fellowship. And uh, that, ha that happens um, once a year, and those students come to Tirana and work with us um, on the project, doing a lot of research. Um, so here's us. Uh, this was in June, and so there's five uh, planning students from GSD, and then five teachers from Tirana, and so it's actually a group of 10, uh, and we work together uh, on the project. Um, yeah. So, yeah. here in the middle is the mayor of Tirana, Erion Bedia, a very young mayor, who came, um, in, came to term uh, as mayor three years ago, and much of this public persona has been built on pushing an agenda that really caters to family and kids. Um, he's taken a lot of initiatives um, in the city in really catering to this demographic through playgrounds, and now more initiatives are coming that are more sustainable. Um, so there has been a lot of commitment and political will at the highest level in what we're working on, and we're in a very um, favorable position to have an agenda that is already being pushed by the mayor. Uh, but so is the case also at an institutional level. So now, once we have that commitment at the decision-making level, how we mainstream uh, infant toddlers and uh, caregivers policy measures in the city. Um, we have started the project three months ago and we are seen as a first phase of working uh, with the municipality in building a data package that would inform the, um, the officials uh, on evidence-based decision-making. We're working together with them um, in uh, refining indicators that were uh, created by the GSD students initially um, well, during the fellowship. Together with uh, having a pilot project um, anchored around school areas, 
is how we're planning to build um, a package that can be then scaled up and um, uh, embedded in the entire institutional setting of the municipality. And hopefully, you know, we have um, standards that have been taken up um, and <clears throat> from these best practices and uh, up to regulations and law. So Tirana right now is going through a major campaign of building new schools. Um, and we think that in five or 10 years, uh, the need for schools uh, and kindergarten in Tirana will be saturated. But all the new schools that have been constructed so far uh, are like islands of quality infrastructure and everything around it is, um, is inadequate. So we have inadequate uh, pavements, uh, infrastructure, there is a low, uh, 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 high density of traffic around school areas usually, so very high pollution as well. Um, that's why, so we're, this is one of the main reasons why we are taking schools uh, as an anchor institution to pilot and then to, re to build a package of measures and incentives that can work um, um, around the neighborhood area. Um, so throughout Tirana, what is, you see very evidently is uh, the, the challenge that caregivers go through in uh, just riding a stroller. Uh, so very often they use cars to get to public amenities from uh, schools to parks, um, clinics, because it's really stressful to to have a stroller in Tirana. Uh, so there is very high traffic, usually during the days. Um, um, so we're thinking of um, schools, epicenter, schools as epicenters where we pilot our project, um, more in terms of mobility measures. Um, so we need to know what kind of policy measures and incentives we can use around the school areas that we can then later on uh, take on and apply and scale up um, in other um, areas in the city. So our ultimate goal is ITC mobility regulation, but we, we believe that we need a proof and we need to learn through going through the process with the, the uh, public officials um, and then adopting uh, the right standards and the right measures um, at the city level. So this is the way that we'll go around mainstreaming uh, these uh, policy issues. So just a couple of uh, statistics about Tirana. Um, there is 40, around um, 46,000 kids of age 0 to 5 out of 800,000 inhabitants and to almost 30,000 kids in, of age 3 to 5 need to go to be in the kindergarten. But there is an overpopulation in kindergartens usually, so most of these kids end up just staying home and one of the caregivers, either it be um, the mother most often or uh, the elderly family member, takes care of them and brings them around uh, areas in the city that are very often inadequate for um, a child that is three to five years old. So they're missing not only on the educational part, but also on really having um, quality uh, childhood. Um, Tirana is a very specific context in terms of the urban planning uh, changes that have happened over a couple of years. There is a huge immigration in the city um, around 10 or 15 years ago, so uh, the need for public amenities was um, very immediate. Um, since the public sector couldn't fulfill the needs, the, the private sector came in. So a lot of the kindergartens that we see now in Tirana are kindergartens just built uh, next to a building like this, that operate and serve the families that have to pay um, for it. So you can see the number of private kindergartens that has been, re has, been has increased a lot during the last five years. 
Um, what is interesting for us and why, why we're looking at it is that it shows that there was the demand was so high and the private kindergarten were very quick to boom. But on top of that, next is the same uh, place next to it, an another um, a bar that serves as a playground for children is constructed. Um, and usually these bars have uh, a low quality environment where kids can play and um, parents have to pay for it. So this is the picture very often in Tirana. And uh, yeah, um, and we, in, 2000, in uh, July, when uh, we had the fellowship uh, with the GSD students, we interviewed a couple of families and went over and over again, what we received as feedback is that uh, the cost of play and the quality of play is a real issue and for, their, for children in Tirana. So I'll just um, read a quote from a mother that there is no playground in the entire uh, neighborhood we live in, so we usually take our three-year-old daughter to a nearby bar. At the end of the month, almost one-third of my salary goes to paying for kids' entertainment, and unfortunately, it's a low-quality one. So this is the picture, and then... Um, yeah, just, just to give a little bit more um, background on the urban, um, there are um, very good uh, reasons uh, for this, all, all spatially. Um, and so you, you can't really see the color here, but um, in the, you know, the, the kind of original urban core up until 1937 was just a very small dot in the center of town. Uh, then um, by 1989, it had expanded a little bit. Uh, communism uh, ends in 1991, and in those uh, 20 years or so, uh, 25 years, um, the city grows from uh, to 200,000 people to 800,000 people. And that whole band uh, on the outside um, never uh, got any services. They just never built them there. So um, here you can see, sort of zoom in, like that's where everything is, uh, right in the middle. The, the, that's a map of uh, all schools, kindergartens and nurseries uh, that just don't exist on the periphery. So. Um, Again, here's a photo. You can see the northern edge of the city um, ends, and then it's just fields. So this is 1988. So of course, everything uh, fills in. Services don't follow. Uh, here's a kind of, uh, we, we attempted a kind of heat map of where it's OK, where it's good to be a kid, and where it's not so good to be a kid. This is um, presence of schools, uh, health centers, uh, all, all, all three kinds of schools and health centers, just very, very basic. But you can see, again, just to kind of hammer the point home. There's these big gaps um, in the top of the city. This is a black as parks, which we didn't wait. Okay, so now the city is building uh, 17 new schools, and of course they're going in this uh, zone. And the, um, the, the school is a very interesting public amenity because it's, a, it's one of the uh, few, uh, it, it's cited exactly where it's needed based on, on demographics. So, uh, there's not a lot of data that Tirana used, but they do know more or less where people live. And so a school will go to where um, people need it, which basically makes it a walk shed. Um, so kind of going back to the strategy a little bit, like we, we, we said in, in one of those early slides, there's sort of two parallel projects going on here. On the, on the one hand, we'll do a pilot um, of a school epicenter, while at the same time sort of building up a data gathering apparatus. Um, which will then be used to sort of feedback. After the first pilot, um, we say, you know, that there, there ought to be revision uh, for efficiency of all of those measures, public consultation, and then pilot number two, and then that then becomes regulation. Um, the, the school um, zone, school children's priority zone, is something that uh, Bernard Gunner has been working uh, with and has also, um, in, uh, has been tested in Bogota a bit, and so we really think Tirana is a good place, sort of has all the conditions that this can be sort of uh, developed steps further. One of the reasons is this, is, this comes from the feasibility study from the city itself. Um, so 12 reasons why 
um, building a school in a new neighborhood is a good idea. School is, school is a community center. Uh, it increases the value of property around it, increased number of businesses around school and development zone, increased security in the surrounding zone, um, and, and of course indirect benefits to educating the, the local kids. So kind of school epicenter is already somehow built into the structure and the way that the city's thinking about the benefits of this. Of course, if the kid's very close to school, within 800 meters, studies have shown that they're much more likely to walk. That's a very good reason. Already, uh, if all of those kids are walking to school, you're taking a lot of uh, cars off the road. Um, so here we see uh, zones uh, kind of faded. Um, the core of this there in the, the blue courtyard building is kind of school as community center. This is a really interesting project that's also run by the Ministry of Education already, which stipulates that the uh, gates of a school need to stay open all day long. So uh, in effect, school campuses around the city are already operating as parks. And this is really important because uh, most of the city that's way too built up, uh, they really lack park space. Uh, and so this is not only opening the gates, letting everybody play there, uh, but it also offers uh, adult uh, computer courses, for example, There's also other kinds of programming for the community. Um, but they should be more green too, obviously. These, let's really treat them as parks, we say. Um, this is a condition that we find very often, sort of just the cheapest maintenance that you can get. Um, and this is, uh, there's, there's actually a lot of territory here which can be turned into especially for zero to fives, baby playgrounds, um, to engage the community further on those campuses. Now, um, step three is to cluster the services. This is really important. So within that zone, we want to build up as many possible services for uh, infants, toddlers, and caregivers that we can. Um, typical, this is kind of uh, state of the, the, the art, let's say, understanding the mobility chains of caregivers. Um, we say what's unique about ITCs, in fact, is that, um, first of all, there's minimum of two people. It's always a kid and a caregiver, so that's one consideration. And secondly, throughout the day, you have multiple caregivers, potentially. So you have mom bringing to school, and then grandpa picking up and taking home. So you're dealing with a, a much more complex uh, ecosystem of uh, interactions and movement throughout the city. So again, even further, um, hammering home the need for clustering, to take trips out of um, the day of caregivers. So put all of that inside the school priority zone, and you're taking a lot of cars off the road. Um, okay, so how big? Barcelona Superblock, 400 by 400. Uh, it's much lower density in Tirana, depending on the neighborhood, but here's a kind of decent guess at the, what the boundaries of this need to be. Um, and then we talk about the ground, of course, then really talk about mobility measures. So it's not just the school campus, but it's all the streets around it. What do we do um, on the roads to basically pilot for the, no the, the staff of the city need to build up a knowledge of how to produce uh, ITC-friendly urban space. That's, n nobody's built a raised crosswalk in the city before. So we don't know how much it's going to cost, really. We don't know how fast they can do it. All of these procedures, in order to build up um, the uh, supportiveness of that uh, space, needs to be tested before we feel comfortable turning into regulation. Um, so it's not going to look like this anymore. You're going to pass through a force field of comfort as an um, ITC into this world which is extremely supportive of you, um, in every way and allows you to sort of just live the life that you need to live without um, uh, too many obstacles. So Almost done, okay. I will, um, just mention that this is what we worked on with the GSD students. We really tried to align um, our indicators to the SDG indicators and uh, the national priorities. So there is um, a 22 indicators categorized that we worked on and that we will refine further on and we identified which ones were really directly contributing to SDGs and national priority indicators. These are broad indicators and we'll work more specifically in the future in really refining it um, uh, together with the municipal officials.
Um, so this is more or less our take on the um, on ICT, ITC issues in Tirana, and for us, one of very um, crucial issues that we see is that Tirana very often is seen as a place that is not very much uh, uh, friend, it's not a place where families want to raise their kids. So a lot of families today, especially middle class families, tend to leave the country just because it's too expensive and you don't get the right services to raise uh, children in Tirana. So we hope that some of these measures together with the commitment that comes uh, from the municipality, we will contribute, in a way, to you know, making the city better, in a way. Thank you.